Good afternoon, I'm Roger Gilbert and publisher of Milling and Grain magazine. It's April 21, third week of April in 2020 and the fourth week of our COVID-19 lockdown here in the UK. COVID-19 has brought a standstill to businesses here, uh, as in many other countries, and a lockdown to many of the people that we serve. But around the world, we are having to learn lessons associated with COVID-19 as we, as we go along. COVID-19 from country to country, and we have been trying to learn rapidly of each other's experiences. And in our May edition of Milling and Grain, we reported on lessons learned from the Chinese uh, when they were supplying basic foodstuffs to a population that was in strict quarantine. That centred mainly around feed, animal production and meeting the food needs of consumers restricted from leaving their homes. While those restrictions are not as severe in many, as in many, many countries now going through the pandemic, uh, producing food to meet consumer demand throws up similar challenges and that, that were experienced in China. Our industry would produces flour as an essential foodstuff provider, providing consumers with a wide variety of nutrients, including energy and protein in their daily diet. Flour is a basic foodstuff for our survival. But how are millers coping with the changing COVID-19 situation? And what lessons can we take from those at the sharp end when it comes to maintaining our food supplies? Flour millers, like others, should be considered essential workers in a pandemic of this nature. If that is so, we need to understand why. Today, I'm pleased to welcome to the Rongo Rongo video studio the head of the UK's milling industry, Director General Alex Waugh of NABM. NABM is the National Association of British and Irish Millers. Uh, welcome, Alex. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Roger. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Yes. Um, and, and thanks for the, the intro and, and the background. Uh, and first of all, yes, here in the UK and I think in most other countries, um, food workers in particular, phenomenas, are regarded as, as, as key workers. Uh, and uh, in the UK, as a result, they have access to uh, childcare facilities uh, uh, and, and so on to, to help them continue to work properly. Uh, although, by and large, uh, millers are a self-sufficient bunch, and so we've uh, uh, managed, I think, to, to, to look after ourselves and, and, and not take advantage of, of um, some of these schemes uh, and leave them for the people who really, really need them, and that's, uh, that's in the healthcare sector. Um, and, that, and that's important. Well, what I was going to, to ask is that you know, a lot of people... Uh are enjoying the sunshine. We have fantastic weather out there at the moment uh, and people are furloughed uh, from businesses or working from home and possibly enjoying their family life a, a little bit more than usual, uh, taking exercise, etc. But that's not the case with millers. Millers, I would understand, uh, are hard at work. And uh, can you bring us up to date with some of the situation? For example, how much flour is being produced now? Uh, how much is normally produced? Is there a change in that? Uh, some of the background to the flour milling industry. Okay, so uh, here, in, here in the UK, um, millers uh, on average are producing about 80,000 tonnes of flour a week. Um, and uh, that the level of demand is probably actually slightly down at the moment. Um, uh, and that's uh, a bit of a mixed picture. And for the, here's, here's a reason why. Um, our... Um, sort of our, our bakers of sliced and wrapped bread which is a standard product here in in the uk are, are doing very well uh, sales through through uh, multiple retailers and convenience stores especially are, are are holding up well as people buy wrapped goods uh, which they feel more confident about uh and 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 take them home and and uh eat them at home by contrast of course the out of home sector um, so the purchase of sandwiches in, in corner shops and, uh, um, you know, the uh, high street bakers where you, where you get passing trade, people out for lunch, coffee shops um, are, are, are pretty much closed. Uh, and, and so we've seen a, a big decline in demand from those mm. sorts of business. Mm. 
Uh, and then the third area where there's been really, really strong demand uh, has been for flour to use at home. Uh, mm. So the retail flour. Uh, and, you know, the the mills who, who are packing that kind of flour are going flat out. So mm. they're running their packing lines, and that's the packing line is the limiting factor for them. It's not milling. Mm. Um, they're running those 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they're packing twice as much flour now as they as they would normally do. Mm. Uh, and, and interestingly, that so that happens has happened here in the UK, uh, but but Roger, it's happened everywhere. Um, so we're seeing the same sort of picture uh, in broad terms in the UK. Uh, as we see in France or in Germany or in Italy or in the United States. Yes, well, Alex, uh, that's a, a fast, well, an interesting point, and it just raises in my mind, what about packaging itself? I mean, when you double the amount of small packs that you need, is that side of the industry able to keep up? Yeah, well, um, that's one of the challenges. Uh, you have to bring bring orders forward. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I would say it's more hand to mouth than than would normally be the case. Mm. Uh, but you know, new packaging supplies are coming through, uh, so we we are um, meeting the demand. Um, uh, one of the things that uh, we've done in, in in Britain, and I guess it may have been in other countries too, is um, put up a, a map of of where consumers can buy flour and big bags, so the kind of bags we'd normally supply to the, mm. to the uh, uh, bakery sector. Um, and we've now got, I think, 60 or 70 different outlets where the, the public can go and buy a big bag of flour mm. and either take it home and bake uh, using it all themselves or, or share it with their friends and neighbours. Mm. Uh, you know, it's, it's another way of trying to make sure that people can get what they want. Mm. And one of the fascinating things uh, about how this is, is, is played out is that I would say, by and large, the flour milling sector was largely invisible to the consumer. Uh, they didn't really know about where flour came from or how it came to them. But, you know, the absence of flour on the shelf has really put a spotlight on us, uh, in yeah. a, a largely in a positive way, because I think you know, people have recognised that millers are, are, are doing their very best to keep everyone supplied, and they're working flat out, and, and, and people appreciate that, especially if you can explain to them what, you, what you're doing and yeah. how you're going about it. So um, maybe after this is uh, faded a little bit, we'll we'll be able to capitalise more on that positive spin Absolutely. and uh, and, um, and get people more interested in in as mm. a uh, as a business, as a place to work, and and more interested in the in the products we make and and our customers make. Yeah, well, um, our colleague in New Zealand was saying that in his local supermarket, there's 20 kg bags of flour at the checkout. I mean, mm. that's a huge amount of flour for anybody to be taking home, I would have thought. But yeah, you know, I, th I think we should try and build that into an exercise program mm. uh, so, that, <laughs> so that people can, can use that as part of their weightlifting regime. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, they need to make sure they're um, bending over properly and lifting <laughs> appropriately. Which, which all flour millers know what, how to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. so in, indirectly then... Uh, it's more the logistics uh, that might be the challenge to address in a, a pandemic like this. Uh, what about transportation? I mean, we've heard a lot about uh, stay at home, don't make any unnecessary journeys. What does it mean to your industry uh, when you have to send truck drivers out there uh, for deliveries from multiple flour mills to multiple supermarkets, etc.? Well, um Look, the guys in the businesses are doing a terrific job. Mm. You know, whether they're truck drivers or millers or packers, they're all absolutely committed to uh, to, to making sure that, that that people get the flour they need. Uh, and absence rates have mm. been really, really pretty low. Uh, um, now, it so happens actually that if you're in a in a flour tanker, you're driving along, you're pretty isolated. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's your cab, uh, so so you know you can look after it yourself. Um, but nevertheless, that level of commitment has been has been great, and yeah. uh, we we really owe everyone a debt of gratitude for for their efforts and the pride yeah. and the pride they take in yeah. in, in doing their work. Uh, one of the things that that happened uh, a couple of weeks ago is that our in the UK and Secretary of State uh, George Eustace wrote a letter to all the food businesses 
congratulating them on the job they're doing mm. and, and the role they play in keeping okay. food on the shelves mm. throughout the nation and, and recognising the commitment of those workers. So, you know, yeah. hats off to everyone. Great, great. Um, the government has responded well then, in your view, to the milling right. industry's needs, etc. So as far as the milling industry is concerned, um, we haven't really put great demands on government. Mm. Uh, uh, so we, there's no special provision for, mm. for milling. Um, so like we, know, we but like others, we've made representations mm. and, and get the benefit from flexibility in, in driver's hours so that we can make sure that those more distant uh, sites, uh, customer sites, can be reached uh, and the drivers can get home again without having mm. to stay away, which is obviously important. Mm. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, as, as I say, there is there is access to uh, childcare should, should that really be needed. Uh, mm. When um, testing becomes available for food sector workers, which is expected to be later on this week, okay. um, then, you know, flour milling businesses will have access to that mm. a lot, along with others. Mm. Um, but as I said earlier on, you know, I think millers pr pr pride themselves on being a, a self-sufficient bunch. Mm. And um, we'll, of course, um, if, if we need it, take advantage of, of the, the various schemes and business support measures that the government's introduced. But for the time being, we just want to get on and, and, and make sure our customers are being supplied as, as, as best we can with exactly the right products at the right time. Now, funnily enough, when you asked about deliveries, of course, the roads are a bit clearer. Uh, at the moment, yes, so, so it's, actually, it's actually easier to hit those delivery slots, uh, uh, and and the turnaround times are a bit quicker. So, you know, in yeah. some ways, you know, it's for the worst possible reason, yeah. but but in some ways, d deliveries are are a little bit easier than they might otherwise have been. Yeah. Um, just the last couple of observations or questions, though. Uh, do, do you do you consider, you know, with the experience that the industry's had through this pandemic? Uh, do you think that there should be more preparation for this type of thing in the future? And on top of that, uh, do you think that what are the lessons that your industry could, because we've gone through it a little bit quicker than maybe some other countries are experiencing. Uh, others will look to us for some sort of guidance, I guess, or look everywhere for some guidance. What would be your take home messages or message or messages to other millers that are, association milling associations in the same situation uh look i think i think it it varies quite a lot from mm. country to country so um if you do have uh, uh you know a business which is very dependent on on tourism or, or out of out of home eating you know it, it's going to be very very challenging mm. there's there's no getting away from that people mm. uh certainly aren't going out uh now uh, and we don't know what the future is going to hold. Uh, and it may be that, that demand from that sector doesn't come back um, as quickly as we'd like. Uh, and, and it may, may come back in, in, a, in, in a different form. We don't know to what, you know how our customers are, are going to manage uh, mm -hmm. after, uh, after this is over in those sectors. So at the moment, they benefit from business support and furlough schemes and, and so on but but in you know, that has to end uh, and you know will there be the same demand and space for um, so many out of home uh, eating uh, eating restaurants um, yeah. in in the future we, we don't know mm -hmm. so um, one of the things that I think we uh, as a as a sector we're quite fortunate in is having a broad base of customers uh, uh, and and most mills themselves have a broad base of customers, so that the pain is where there mm. is that kind of loss. That pain is reasonably shared mm. uh, a, a, across the board. Um, but if you if you were exposed to one particular business segment, then mm. no, that's great while well, it's flying, um, mm. but but more challenging when when mm. things go the other way. Mm. <laughs> uh, and and where we're seeing that is not so much in our own businesses, but in our customers' businesses. Mm. Um, so, so that um, you know, our longer-term challenge will be: okay, so how secure are those customers? What can we do to support them? Yeah. Um, and, and what does the future future hold for them? Mm -hmm. All of which are unknowns. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but, but you know, we'll we'll try and 
uh, work with our, our customers on, on that side of things. Um, and then going back the other way, just looking at our supply supply chains uh, with, with farmers, um, I think the farmers, and if you look at you know, what's uh, been the impact in other parts of the, of the farming sector, um, you know, I think grain farmers are, are very happy that, th that things have turned out the way they have with, mm. with, with flour millers. You know, in the UK, uh, the milk sector is being really badly affected because um, all those uh, lattes aren't being made on the high street. Mm. Um, uh, similarly, on, on, on the meat side, you know, all, the, all the best cuts of fillet steak that, mm. that restaurants used to buy are mm. not being bought anymore. Yeah. Uh, so, so freezers are filling up fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're not this not it's not the level of the uh, the oil sector with uh, yeah. uh, people being paid to take the oil away, but yeah. but it, <laughs> you can see how it might lead that way. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we're not as perishable a product as some others, and that might uh, play into the into this as well. Um, yeah, I'm sure that's right as far as consumer customer demand is concerned at, 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 a, you know, at the home level. Mm. You can take flour home and put it in the store cupboard and know it'll still be there okay in two mm. or three months' time. Mm. The same goes for rice and pasta, yeah. um, uh, um, which isn't the same as with um, more perishable foods, uh, mm. and it's perhaps not as constrained by, by freezer space, mm. um, which is, yeah. you know, that's the limiting factor for many households. They can't, if they can't get more in the freezer, they can't store it. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I'd, we'd be really interested in, in your experiences as they unfold over the next uh, month or two, especially getting back into the regular business activity as to uh, what, those, uh, what those lessons might throw up as well. But uh, thank you very much, Alex, for uh, joining us this afternoon. That's it's, a pleasure. It's been an interesting discussion and right. a, a great update. Uh, please, as I okay. say, please feel free to come back. And uh, best of luck in the weeks ahead. But thank you very yeah. much to, for joining us. Uh, thanks. Thanks. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Good to see you, Roger. Yeah. Okay. Bye for now. Bye for now. Bye.